Good evening. I don't want to stop you from sharing thoughts and ideas with friends and neighbors, with the artists, with the three departments of the city that are here tonight. I just want to let you know what the timed agenda is for the evening. So right now we're in the midst of a 20 minute, you don't have to sit down. You have some time left to grab some snacks, to chat with your neighbors, to talk with representatives from Burlington Parks and Recreation, from REIB, Racial Equity, Inclusion and Belonging, and Burlington City Arts. So, you know, and at 520, we're going to open up the mic. The questions that you would like to ask tonight, make sure you fill out a card at the table in the back on your left and um, your name will be called and you can come up to this microphone a little bit later. Um, and we have basically about 45 minutes for questions. And at 5.20, um, Kim Carson, the new director of REIB, is going to do a little introduction right before open mic. And then at the end of the evening, a wrap up and next steps, okay? We're gonna try to be true to our hour and a half. Thank you so much for coming out tonight and being willing to be part of a community dialogue that sometimes is not an easy one, but this is a wonderful neighborhood, a wonderful community, and we're here to listen tonight. So enjoy yourself. There's hot cider and wonderful treats in the back, and we'll be back in a few minutes. Oh. Okay, let's introduce everyone. Okay, I'm sorry I didn't do that for myself, but would uh, the other team members come up? And um, I Chu, you're here. Wait, 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 you gotta use the mic, my mic. Oh, okay. Hi everyone, I'm so excited. I have been thinking about you for years and you don't know who is thinking about you. Well, my design for you guys, I have been doing deep research and look at your farmer markets, look at all the students in the integrated academy. Beautiful, beautiful community and the art is inspired by you, by the community and by the students. And I'm so happy I'm here, have a pause on my design process and give space and give time and listen to all of you. And that I will bring all your thoughts with me and come home and I will creating with you in my mind. Thank you so much. It's okay, we're just gonna, we're just part of the community. I'm Dorian Kraft, I'm the director of Burlington City Arts. Sorry, I'm Kim Carson, the uh, director of the REIB, Race, Equity, Inclusion and Belonging Office. Good evening, and I'm Cindy White, I'm your director for Parks, Recreation and Waterfront. Um, hopefully for those of you who have come in um, a few minutes ago, make sure that you take some time to go back and look at the 3D modeling that we did that was requested at the last public meeting so that you could look at the scale and appropriateness. Um, that's in the back of the room on the table right under the basketball hoop. Okay, thanks so much. Be back in just a few minutes. Good evening. Can I have everyone's attention move this uh, to the front so we can start the meeting? I want to make sure we give everybody time that would like to speak to speak. Um, good evening and welcome again. My name is Kim Carson. I'm the, again the director of the REIB. Um, I'm here to talk a little bit about the project but also introduce myself. This is the first time I've been in my official capacity um, at a meeting. So. Really excited to be here. Um, it's interesting because this is my neighborhood as well. So I just moved into this area and I picked this area to move in. I could have pretty much picked anywhere and I really love this neighborhood as well as this school. My son is a student at this school. And so I'm really excited about hearing everyone's voice and what they think about this project and how we can move forward collectively as a community. Um, I know there's a lot of uh, tension and, and people have different thoughts and opinions about this, but I really ask tonight that we all lean in curiosity, understanding that everybody's right, but nobody's totally right, right? And there's a lot of different voices and opinions at the table. And so what we wanna do is really acknowledge and listen. And so one of the things 
I would like to do is kind of acknowledge some people in the room that were a part of the process. Some may already left. In my, can everyone hear me? Yes. In my research, I'm very new in this position, so I walked into this project. I first walked into it at the MPA as just a resident who was trying to get to know my neighborhood. And as I was sitting there, I learned about what was going on. And so one of the things I wanted to do was take a pause as the director, do a little bit of research about how the process happened, who was at the table, what voices were heard, and what that looked like. So if you look back on one of the easels back there, it says Dewey Park Selection Process. I think one of the things that my office didn't do well at that time was explain what that process is. I did some research to figure out what that looked like because I was new myself. And so the selection process is what you see there. Who was at the table for the selection process was heavily BIPOC people from this community, okay? And so it may not have been the usual players, I'm from my gathering what I understand, but they were from this community who actually not only came up with some of the criteria, but as well as on the selection process for the artist, okay? So I want to kind of clarify some of those because we did get some of those questions from the beginning. Um, next, I do want to thank a couple people. So Councilman Bergman has been um, very integral in this process in making sure that things were, uh, the money and the funds that we needed to move forward with this process were there. So he was a part of this process. And then I did meet recently Andrea Todd. She was a part of this process as well on the Parks Commission. And so I want to give her a nod because she was really a part of this from the beginning and kind of gave the legs to this when this was introduced. And then next, um, Ben Rogers, who was also a part in two capacities. He was a part of this as far as the market, as well as he does work um, with Park and Rex and is really helping us move forward looking at green space conserva conservation and making sure that we're honoring what we say we're honoring in two capacities. And so I really want to give a nod to him because he pushed us a little bit. Nothing's wrong with being pushed a little bit, right? To come up with scalable models and to deliver on things that the community asked for. So I really want to say thanks to Ben. And then also there were a lot of school staff involved, some that are still here, some that are not, that were a part of the planning process as well. And then lastly, RIB, um, Burlington's Arts and Park and Rec, just for, we don't do a lot of combined <laughs> conversations and talking and projects, and this is one that we did. Um, the intent of this public art, I think, is what's most important, the embrace and belonging. And so I'm actually gonna bring a team member up, um, Blaine from my team from RIB, that was REIB that was here. I wasn't a part of the process at the beginning and what the catalyst for that, and so I think it's a bit disingenuous for me to stand up here and tell you about something that I wasn't a part of. So I'm gonna pass it to Blaine and she's gonna um, give some details about that. Hi everyone, uh, my name is Blaine Antense. I work for the REIB. Um, I wanna to speak to the point of this sculpture here is three things. We wanna remember, we wanna reflect, we want to embrace. Um, and the most important thing kind of, the, the sculpture came out of the racial reckoning that happened in 2020 that I'm sure we all remember. And what happened there is a lot of emotions came out and a lot of action came out and a lot of people were kind of, we had a mirror up to society and we had to look at ourselves. So in the same way that 9-11 or the Holocaust, we have to remember these incredible events or else we are doomed to repeat them. So what we're doing here with this sculpture is really giving ourselves an opportunity to reflect on everything that we learned. Um, and sometimes that's hard and sometimes embrace comes with a lot of change and adaptation and that's kind of why we're having this session here. But I wanna leave that out there for people to think about as we think about the significance that this sculpture could or couldn't have to you um, and why we're all here. So, thank you. Thank you, Blaine. And then lastly, I wanna talk about the impact on education. Blaine talked about a few things like we wanna we want to um, kind of remember and never forget we also want to educate, and that's a big piece of the picking of the location. This is not just a school, this is a school that's an art-based school, art-based school, as well as a magnet school. And what's important about that is it's not just the kids that live in this community, it's also kids that come here from outside the community that get the opportunity that don't live in the one to be impacted by the one, right? And so I think it's also important to maybe lean in and think with a little bit of curiosity about how a public art piece that's based in education can be supported. As I told you, my son goes to the school, and I'll leave you with this. We just came from Iowa, which is very diverse. Not really. Okay. <laughs> and I didn't expect for him 
to come home on his first day and say this is the first time ever as a, a student, he's in fifth grade, that he was actually the majority in his classroom. He has always been the only one. And to see kind of the smile on his face and the sense of belonging when he said, these are my people, kind of a quirky art-based kind of kid. And so unbeknownst to us, this really fit him. Um, he walks to school every day. He's very excited. And so I took him to the park to kind of tell him what was going on and what this may be. And he was very excited about that. And so I just want maybe to lean in a little bit to us and we'll lean into you. And I want to turn this over to you to hear your thoughts and your feelings so that we can go back and really think about this as we move forward in our process, okay? So I will turn this over to, um, I believe everyone filled out cards so that you guys can have time to speak. This is more of a listening session, so unless there's a direct question we can answer, we really just want to hear with you and think about what we do moving forward. Thank you. So what uh, she said was, can the speakers make sure, including me, that you hold the mic up to your mouth and project, because we have a few people online. So thank you. I, I think the question was about how long for graffiti. Well, at different parts of the city, different times, but this sculpture will be prepared with a special coating that's a graffiti coating so that you can remove graffiti from it. One of the things that we did with our display out back is um, show the tents for the farmer's market to show that how they could fit around the art. And so the sense from us is that the farmer's market will be able to coexist with the art. And we did have a member of the farmer's market um, was part of the committee to help us assure, in, ensure that we took that into account. So we never put parameters around our search. There's always a search that goes out. It's only a question of marketing funds that are available and with a budget of this significance, um, we felt it was important. Within um, the community, I think there are many artists when there is a piece that is dedicated to racial equity equity and understanding, a number of artists have stepped aside and would not have participated in that process. They let us know that. And so we knew from the beginning that our search would have to be wide. Second part of the question. Yeah, I guess it's a whole separate question. So um, this one is wondering, uh, basically, can you tell us what it's going to look like to use electricity for this culture? Um, We've electrified other public art sculptures in the city. Um, this is something we discussed with BED. I think Cindy's department probably had those conversations. It's going to be LED lights. It's going to cost about $10 a month. And that'll be something paid for by the project. And, soft lighting. and going to be very soft lighting. 24 hours? If you have set a timer, it's a lobby night. 
you can put a timer on it to turn it off at night. It, it is not determined the number of hours. It can be turned off at night. First, I think when we looked at the pictures, it did look completely out of scale. If you remember where it's being placed, there actually was a tree there. And so if you put seating around a tree and have the tree, it's roughly the same amount of space. I think, unfortunately, the original pictures that were put out really made it look completely out of scale. And so when you go back and look on the table when it's actually a two scale model, you see how everything lays out. And that's our fault, right? For giving something that wasn't completely accurate to scale. Um, why this park was picked, there was a multitude of reasons and that's what the board says back there. And BIPOC people from this community came up with the reason, um, the reasonings behind that. Um, I think the other thing to think about is this is the only location that actually has an art academy across from this. And so it's not just about the current education, but there also will be local artists that come in in res residency and do different things with the school in relationship to this project. And so I think it's, it's really important to understand this is not just a one-off, that there's really gonna be a lot of education. And just kind of an anecdote, I come from a state, I come from Iowa, where we're really making significant efforts in that state to not educate people about anything to do with race. Um, and it's very important that we do an intentional effort when we're doing this, and this is a way to engage young people who are our future about education specifically to race. And so as a parent of a, a child that had to fight within the school system in Iowa to even have education around anything race, this is a huge thing that I didn't expect to see. And so having across the school is very, very impactful. Also, think about children that come here outside of the Old North End that also will impact this. I think it's really, really important. And that's just my personal take on the education piece of it. Okay. Is this happening no matter what, or are you truly listening to the neighborhood and making changes? Otherwise, it's offensive to pretend that you're even trying to include the neighborhood at this late stage. I think that's a little bit of a complicated question, especially from a person that's new to the city. I think as the, I think I'm obligated as the race equity uh, director to call out a few things. One of them, look to your left, look to your right. I don't see a lot of diverse voices in this room. When I did my research about the, um, the actual farmer's market, um, I don't know how much, I couldn't get a, a solid answer about the diversity of that as well. So. What I would say to you is it's not necessarily all aspects of it are not a done deal. The location, this is the place where the BIPOC people said would be the greatest impact for them. And I, I don't think it's a great idea to ignore those voices just because maybe they're not as loud or they couldn't come tonight or, or whatever that might be. Um, I wanna be careful about how I say what I say because I am new and I want to embrace this community as my own as well. But I think it's very important to look around at who's upset about this. My question to you, you're asking questions of us, is have you sat down with all of your BIPOC community members that live here and asked them their thoughts? Um, there were people that were a part of this of across the board, not just black, not just um, you know, Pan-Asian, whatever that might look like that said this is where they wanted it. And so I think when you think about it, do we have to pick a side or is it some compromise in the middle? And so I think that's something we're trying to get to here. So the location itself, it's, it's not, it doesn't meet all the criteria. I think looking at some other aspects of the project, we may be able to, and I know we can look into it.
Ma'am, I'm sorry. If you could, if you don't mind standing up just for the mic, just so people everywhere can. I just wanted to push back on the fact that you Absolutely. said look around and everybody here is white, but that's not necessarily representative of who's really here. My children are BIPOC. I might present as older white cis mm -hmm. female, and that's probably true for a couple of other people here. Mm -hmm. So I just wanted to make that comment. No, I really appreciate that, and that's why I said you know I want to be very careful, but perception becomes reality, right? And so as a person of color. I'm sitting here as a black woman, really trying to understand the why behind it so I can actually support my community in my official capacity as the director, but also as someone that lives in the community because I'm torn, right? And I've met with quite a few people since I've been here exactly one week. Um, and so I've spent my time over the last week really delving into this because I, I don't want it on any level to be that this was something that was already done deal and we're just pacifying you to, because to be clear, all jokes aside, I could be putting my bed together. So, <laughs> sleeping on the floor. So, I, this matters. Does that make sense? I, community matters, where things happen matter. And so, I want to hear on both sides what's going on and what's the best pathway forward. So, I really appreciate you. Can I just ask a clarifying question related to what people have asked? Um, can you just um, tell us exactly how many people from the neighborhood or on in the group that chose the artwork. Let me double check my notes. And how they were chosen. I cannot tell you, just to be transparent, how they were chosen because I wasn't here and I couldn't find the documents for that, but I did try. And I know there were roughly, I want to say six six people on that committee. Um, that six people or people from the neighborhood? I believe six people um, on the selection process, I'll let. No, um, so we don't have the documentation from the research that went on from the early part who went out into the community and spoke. It was members of the team who then worked for REIB. Some of them currently do not, and they worked with different trusted voices in the community, went to different settings, took people on walks through the different parks, but those names are not known, and I also think I would not, given this setting, um, just say that. I would only use a number if we actually knew. Then after that happened, it went back to the Parks Department, and REIB worked with the Parks Department to look through all of the parks and the potential of each park and what their issues were, and were they in a comprehensive planning process. Um, the opportunities that we came with for this sculpture and looked through all of the parks that you can see on the um, chart in the back. Then there was a selection. How many people were part of that, how many people were part of, that process? of which process, Andrea? The second phase that you just The did. second phase is when the phase with choosing the artist? I, I don't know the answer to that. I don't. To be honest, Andrea, that really resides with the REIB, and that information just isn't there. I looked as deep as I could. We made some phone calls. We really tried to get to the bottom of it, but I think people are aware in this community about the strife that happened with the turnover in this position, and so we just don't have that information. I do know, what I do know was the there were some interns from RIB that went out and talked to trusted members from the BIPOC community for um, adults. Um, and they went out and surveyed the parks and looked through, and then they selected three locations. Those are the top three that you see. And then they went to the parks to hit additional criteria to make sure there wasn't extended barriers, as we discussed on the posters. Sorry, people online, I'm sorry. I still was just wondering exactly how many people were on the art selection that were from this neighborhood. Colin, Colin, would you like to come and answer that question? Or Sarah, either one of you, whoever managed the process. Um, I believe the exact number of residents from this neighborhood
when were people in the community engaged? Because the first time I heard about this, and I'm, I pay a decent amount of information as I can for having a job and stuff, was when it was told to me at the farmer's market, this is what it's gonna be and this is what's gonna happen. So when were the people of this community actually engaged in this project? Sophie, can you grab that timeline that has the, I think there's one printed out on the table. Can I ask a clarifying question for you? When you're saying the members of the community, when were they noticed and, and those kind of things, because everybody's process is different, do you mean when was it at public meetings or what specifically type of engagement are you referencing? Um, well, I just, when, when we talked about actually closing off part of Spring Street and, and having more green space for Dewey Park, that was, we had a meeting right here, and um, that was engaged, it was, it was talk, it was spread around, like, the, the, all the surrounding streets, because it affected all the surrounding streets. So, I mean, it would have been nice to have that sort of engagement for something that's such a small, intimate part. And so whether you did it that way or it was just, it was at one, you know, 10 minutes at one city council meeting that I didn't happen to see, you know, I'm just wondering when the engagement was and what capacity that engagement was. Looking at the notes here. So the, if you're looking at, so the, um, it, it was vetted at the Parks Commission meeting on September 14th, 2021. And then as you noted, city council ones, um, that was on May 23rd, 22. Uh, Parks, Arts, and Culture Committee discussed it on September 28th, the 22. The project was discussed at the Ward 2 and 3 NPA meetings on September 8th. I'm not sure if that's supposed to be 22 or if that was 21. 21, so September 8th, 21, and then again in October. And during the One Farmer's Market, um, which I think many of you are familiar with, on October 25th of this year. That's when we came to talk about the um, annex portion. Um, I also just want to clarify that I was at that Parks Commission meeting as a Parks Commissioner, and um, it was really cl clearly expressed at that meeting that, wow, this is a really small park. They don't know, we don't know what it's gonna look like. And I expressly said, it's really important that this has big engagement with this community. Um, so October or September 21st, 2021, was the first request for public engagement. Thank you. Um, really quick, we just want to make sure we hear from everyone. Um, so if you've already asked a question, um, please just make sure you leave room for other folks before you ask another. Thanks. I can answer the part, um, I can't answer the climbing factor, we'll talk to the artist a little bit on that one, but I think anybody can climb just about anything. Uh, we're kind of waiting at uh, frame. But, uh, so as far as the rest of it, uh, we're on a timeline from the park side to have it looking nice on, on the uh, uh, Old Springsteen portion. By the time that the art goes up in, the goal is by Juneteenth is when it goes up. So we're looking at uh, refreshing the um, artist paint there um, we, um, so potential sale, uh, S-A-I-L, sale type structures that would provide a little bit more shade that down the line could be removed if the long-term vision does not include those. Um, and then also um, doing improvements as far as the planters go to make that look a lot nicer there. 
and then we will um, engage with the process um, with DPW. One of the first things we need to do as far as for the long term for that section to become a park is that we need to do a survey of it. We've done an initial look of it and there's a lot of water lines that run under there. Um, it's a very uh, complicated section. So we need to get the first the survey done um, and then we'll work through that process. But there's no plans for that to revert back to a road. It's just a process that we would need to go through, but we're really working to get a really nice refresh so it doesn't have this beautiful art on one side and then just kind of cracked old, very tired art on the other side. Hi, that was a wonderful question about uh, climbable or not. First of all, I want to uh, uh, thank the teacher and the team of the teachers. They are incredible uh, uh, classes. I first was doing research and I see the uh, quality of the students' art is just astounding. I thought, I want to bring my kids here. I, 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 I have five kids, so children is so important. They are our future. So I really admire the teachers here. And thank you for your support. And I can guarantee you, I will make sure that it's not climbable. I will make sure that at least three meter from the bottom up, three meter will be smooth texture. In no way anybody can climb up. And, uh, but they can see the birds, the light shining through the birds and onto the ground and onto your face. And the kids can chase picture of birds on the ground, on the seat, and they can become a part of the artwork. So they can know that uh, in early age, that we are part of each other, we are like the light of birds, we can become light. So that is a wonderful educational tool that uh, embrace everybody. And because the sculpture is transparent, so everybody can see through, uh, can still engaging each other. It's not like a place that block the view. You can see through it and the light can shine through it and they provide shades and you can see it. So it's actually a wonderful functional sculpture for you to sit and for you to have shade and have community gathering. So it's like also a uh, um, advertised point like, hey, look, we can meet in this embrace sculpture. So it give you a wonderful focal point. You can come together to sit, to relax, and to look at children play and learning the light of birds is representing who we truly are. We are part of each other. We are alike more than we are not alike. And the connection that we have is the embrace and the belonging. And I think that will serve your community and as a mother, I can assure you, it will bring smile to your children's face and will not occupy too much green space because it's a transparent design and the scale we will try to reduce to um, make everybody happy and uh, serve everybody's needs. Thank you so much. come to this meeting where a few, wearing a few different hats. Um, and I just want to clarify that I, I did not know about the sculpture until the last day of the market. And, um, you know, I think that I'm speaking for most people in this room where, you know, I really support what this monument stands for. And the idea of getting a, a public art into our community is really exciting. Um, but there was obviously a, a lapse of communication that me being a pretty obvious liaison between the market and the parks department didn't find out until the last day. Um, had I known, I would have absolutely been engaged with the vendors and the market goers and other folks from the Parks Department to come up with a really intentional plan to how to uh, place such a important sculpture with such meaning. Um, and so when I started thinking about that, I started thinking about what other needs does the park uh, have? And, you know, do we, we're constantly looking or places where there's access to green space, especially here in the Old North End, where green space is very limited. Um, we're looking for spaces where we can have nursery space, for places for plants, and we're looking for places where we can have compost systems. And I'm just wondering if there is a possibility for Dewey Park to go through more of a comprehensive plan in a way that 
Kieslik Park or Oak Ledge Park received so that before we go ahead and place a sculpture, um, it can get the process it deserves to see how the, the community is going to interact with that space and how it's going to continue to interact with that space moving forward. So. Um. I can go ahead and answer that one. I think, Ben, one of the things you're familiar with is comprehensive plan is a long, extensive process. Um, we're, for this art, we're moving forward with the, with the art in the park, and but there will be a process as far as the rest of that space there. We need to figure out, there's a lot of pavement over to the side, the end of Spring Street. Um, I know some folks are very interested in it remaining a plaza, that that would be a nice place to, um, we've, you know, envision could we have chairs um, and tables similar to what we have at City Hall Park, so you could come over and enjoy, you know, a lunch in the park and not have to be sitting down on the grass. Um, is grass space really what you want there? Are kids really going to be playing on a ball, playing, throwing catch, you know, when you're surrounded by streets? I don't know if that's really what, but that'll be what we'll go through with um, the Spring Street um, portion of that. What do we want to do with the rest of that, with that space? So there will be a process that we'll be going through with that, with that portion of it. I'm all good. Thank you very much, Key. Yeah. Okay. Um, we'll take a couple more, and then uh, we'll have Sydney and Tom come to have it. Uh, I'll do like maybe two more. Okay. Okay. Um, so, at a time of high inflation and 15% tax increase for VHS, why are we spending our money this way? That's somewhat hard to answer. Um, this was money that was already allocated, um, I believe, through. Okay. Um, and was passed by the city council. I come in on the back end of it. Um, but a thought. <laughs> um, I know we want to bring up budgets in time like this, but at the end of the day, is that the reason why we don't want to have a sculpture that is <laughs> memorializing this? And so I. I want to honor the person's question, but I will tell you as a woman of color, that's hard to hear. Um, that's really hard to hear, that we want to think about money in that moment that we would stop this particular project um, that has such significance and meaning to um, black people after what happened in 2020. That's just a hard one. Um, I think the financial piece of it, we shouldn't, we shouldn't wait. No more than we would wait on kids, we shouldn't wait. Uh, how much extra time would it add to the project to consider rezoning the, I'm not sure what that word is, to rezoning the right of way as a place to put the sculpture? I, yep, I know what that's talking about. And so we will, it'll be a parallel process. So as we continue, as this process keeps moving forward for the art, we continue to move forward our, with on our side. Our goal is to get that survey done in 2023. And again, we're also, and so I guess there's sort of three paths because there's the art, we're working forward for the survey as far as for um, the Spring Street side, but we also have another parallel path of making sure that it's refreshed on um, the art and space so that when the art goes in, Hopefully by Juneteenth, that, that side looks nice too. So there's almost like three paths going through there. My understanding as far as that is that a lot of it is because of what runs under there with the water lines and such and sewer lines that are under there. We don't want to put art where all of a sudden we're going to having to dig art up when a water lane breaks. We don't mind digging grass up or digging up some pavement, but we certainly don't want to undermine art. So we have one comment so far online. So the comment is, has the artist that designed and painted the street mural, I'm wondering what is the plan for my work. I believe 
we're reaching out to that individual. My understanding was, if not, the plan was to be reaching out to that artist um, with that space. Oh, we have already reached out to that artist. I thought we, sorry, I feel unclear with that. My understanding is that we had reached out to the artist already around um, refurbishing that art. Yeah, we'll, we'll follow up there, and we'll certainly apologize if she felt like that we dropped the ball. I know a lot of things once the pandemic hit definitely um, impacted, but I don't want to make the pandemic an excuse for communication. We'll, but we are very much um, planning on working with that artist. Okay, and then um, Jennifer Hall has a question. We've in part answered this question, but I think it's a good one just to revisit. Um, what is the purpose of this public input meeting? <laughs> to teach Doreen how to hold a mic. Um, I think it's multi-purpose. Um, since we had the last meeting, there were a lot of questions asked by the community. We tried to do the research to have answers about those questions. I think the first images that came out were deceiving and made people feel that the scale was inappropriate and I thought it was really important that we do a two scale so we could really look exactly at how this was gonna fit within this public space. Um, I think it was important to come into the community, into the school, um, very much engaging um, with the administration and with teachers to talk about the future because we were actually beginning that engagement discussion for, for future uh, residency programs. So it was an opportunity to ask those questions. Um, we also, and I hope this is really clear, when we were in touch with the artist, um, we asked if this could be put on pause before it goes to the foundry. So you understand we have a signed contract with an artist that this was going forward. And this is very unusual to ask someone to step back who is in the process where everything has been signed off by the city of Burlington and said, could you hold off before going to the foundry, come listen more, look people in the eyes, get a chance to hear. It's one thing to read a comment online, it's another thing to hear it in person. And we thought it was really important that I chew be with us tonight and that pause meant that we paused, we paused. We said, okay, right now, this sculpture is 20 feet high. It actually was commissioned for 24 feet high. And it was brought back to 20 feet. So what you're looking at tonight is a 20 foot model. And we're, okay, I hear you. And um, I think what we're looking at is there, what other are parts of this conversation? that we should be listening to. It, it, it definitely, the, the part that is not open for discussion, and I wanna be honest about that, is this park. It was created for this park. This artist did her research, brought that into play in her creation of this piece. It is specifically done for this park. So when you look at it to scale with the tree, which is about 30 plus feet, 37, 37 feet, and you see the difference between the tree and the, the model, you'll see the difference there of what it would look like 
in relationship to the tree because the tree is the largest thing there. This was created by an architect. So to the best of our ability, this was absolutely one-tenth scale. The model then was taken to generator and created. So, you know, to, to our absolute honest, <laughs> this is, yeah, sorry. Um, I have to be the one apologize about the uh, rendering. They are just artistically rendering, so they are exaggerating a little bit on scale. Look like 60 feet, if you <laughs> just look the sculpture, because uh, the embrace is powerful. It's so powerful, it makes you feel like overwhelming. But actually, in reality, they are occupy much smaller space when we come to refining the design, we will be more accurate. And then now we step back and we pause and we take your thoughts into our mind and design. So the scale will be exactly in proportion fitting, fitting the Dewey Park. So please forgive about the rendering. It is just an artistic exaggeration in a way to show you the power of impress. So it's about 20 feet, but that's, that is the part that we are listening to you to see what we can do about the scaling and the size. The park itself is, it's gonna be in the park. The conversation that we're having now is where else can we look at making some adjustments, listening to what you're saying. Does that make sense? I just wanna just also note too that we're, from the base wise, we just gotta make sure structurally that it sounds so that you know, everything's protected. So we don't want to be shrinking things in too hard as far as our concrete and such too. I feel like I, I want to answer that one for Kim, or maybe we just don't answer that one as far as um, what this represents. To um, so the questions that remain are duplicates. So if folks have other questions, they can come up and ask. Um. I, you've, you've actually done a lot to help me feel a little bit better about it. Um, I don't care how big it is. It could be 60 feet tall for all I care. I just don't want it to disrupt the farmer's market. So if there's still room for the farmer's market, even if that means, I mean, I don't know if it could, if there's room to even expand the farmer's market into the, the park where Adam's mural is, I don't know. Um, because the farmer's market does bring a diverse community together. One thing that the farmers do is that they, they grow vegetables that are needed by immigrant families in the neighborhood that they can't get at the grocery store. So it really does bring the neighborhood together. Um, so to disrupt something that really brings a diverse group of people together and fulfills diverse needs, for something that just celebrates their needs um, seems backwards. But if both can fit there, that's great. <laughs> so I'll answer that, yes, unequivocally yes. The whole point of this conversation and everything around it is to, and why we developed this, the um, model was to demonstrate how the two could coexist. This is not an and or conversation, it's a both and conversation. And not just can it, the farmer's market be there. But one of my questions when I came on, my first question is, can it grow? And so that was one of the questions I asked as far as how could we support the growth of this market, not just as it exists now. So yes, they both can coexist at the same time. And that was a primary factor, is that it did not take away from the market. Hi, my name is Rachel Jolly. Thanks for coming and making this event. I might be in the minority in terms of also being a fan of the project around how it's, um, I mean, I acknowledge that 
the bi biggest difficulty I had was the how in terms of the process of communication, and, and I feel like it goes a long way when the partners can acknowledge the mistakes being made, so I really appreciate that because it gives me more confidence that um, learning is happening as we go forward. Um, I feel like the, as a, an employee of the city, I also, we sometimes encounter a lot of criticism about, about lack of process, and you've listed that there were a lot of city-sponsored processes, and sometimes those don't reach everyday people. I feel like I'm fairly engaged, but I don't follow board docs and what's on the city council agenda, and so Front Porch Forum goes a long way. And admittedly, the, the first time I heard about it was from Andrea's post on Front Porch Forum, and I just want to acknowledge it in terms of methods of this neighborhood, Front Porch Forum is really accessible to a lot of people. It's not everything, and I think REIB is going to a lot of efforts to reach more um, hard to reach populations or people who are using different methods, so I appreciate that. And if I learned one thing from this process is that it was um, a, a, a lot of great intention, but sometimes if it's after the fact, it creates the blowback is, is almost um, counterproductive. Um, but I just want to enumerate the many things that I do appreciate as somebody who um, used to live across the street from this park, who sent my daughter to this school and was very engaged in this school. This is a, a really great hub for community meetings. And so to encourage to use this again and again as, as a place to bring people together. And I really love public art. We don't have that many um, examples of it in the old North End except for building murals. So I'm, I'm, I'm very excited about a sculpture and something that is a an important public representation of remembering and reflecting. Um, we don't have enough, uh, I think, physical opportunities to talk about race and um, the the murals that we have had that um, were not as in, like and ended up being not the opportunity that I would have hoped. The Everybody Loves It Parade was not the um, opportunity, invitation to talk about race in a productive way in my example, in my view. And so I feel like BCA has learned from that and I know that REIB has, continues to learn. Um, and then the last thing in terms of what I appreciate is the, the joining with the Integrated Arts Academy and the mission here and bringing kids hopefully more into discussion and um, interaction with their community. So overall, really thankful and just hope that we continue to learn about different ways to engage the community earlier and earlier. And thanks to Andrea for bringing it to our attention and bringing more community voices. And thanks all. Hi, my name's Steven. I live right on the corner of Elwood and Spring. I've lived there for 38 years. And so I've seen a lot of transformations in the park and I think they've all been really good. And when I first saw this one, I, I love it. I love the sculpture, I love the idea of public art, I love the connection with the school. I would echo a lot of what, what um, Ms. Jolie said. And um, the only thing I wish, I, I expected to see a big version of it right here. I still have not seen a good representation of what it's gonna look like. The only image, and, and I look at Front Watch Forum, and I think I saw the only image was a printed version in maybe seven days or something. So I'm still looking for a nice illustration of what it's gonna look like and how big it's gonna be. I heard tonight it's gonna be transparent. I thought it was metal. So I'm not even sure what the material is. When I saw it, I, I loved it. I'm, I'm disappointed if there's a reduction in size. I think the bigger, the better. The more dramatic it would be. So I'm really hoping there's a, there's, a, there's not gonna be a reduction of size. If that's a scale model over there, I think that's, Horrible. It needs to be twice as big as that. It's, it's, it, to me, it was a beautiful representation of, of the, the theme that you're trying to express. So I hope it's not going to be reduced. I think the placement is important. The image that I saw, that's why I wanted to look more carefully tonight, the image that I saw, I, I personally am artistic, and I didn't really like the base and I'm not sure exactly how the base works, the, the design of the base works with the flowing curvature of the sculpture itself. So I, I was hoping that we, there could be some input into the design tonight, perhaps not. But, uh, but anyway, I, I'm very much in favor of it. I'm excited to see it go up. It's, a, it's, an, it's the latest transformation of the park that I've witnessed in 38 years where I've lived right in that corner. And I think we're moving in the right direction. Let's get Spring Street closed off next, okay? So let me just say that the artist would love to talk with you.
artist. The artist would like to talk with you. She, yeah. We're going to be around for a few yeah. minutes, and Great. she'd love to talk with you. What's it going to be made out of? Steel. Stainless steel. Stainless steel. Um, hi, my name is Colby. I live on Elmwood Ave. And um, this, that was a good segue for what I wanted to say, because um, 10 years ago, the community asked for Spring Street, Spring Street to be closed. Um, and they, the community presented a very clear map of what they envisioned for that, which was essentially converting it, expanding the green space in the existing Dewey Park so that there was more green space, more space for trees, more space for shade. Um, so the city ended up closing that in 2014. The sign put up by the city in the park says that what they put up in 2014 says we're making this short-term parklet with planters and boulders uh, just in the interim until we implement our longer-term plan of converting it into park space. Um, and, and just a note on that, back when they converted it, they put out the chairs and tables, and then about a month later, those all disappeared. So we, we already kind of tried that. <laughs> um, so my, my biggest concern is that I really don't see how you can have a park where you put in a sculpture, and expect there to be any sort of design cohesion or any sort of complete, sensible, logical plan for the park when a big chunk of the park is completely unfinished and completely in flux. It just, you, to me, you're just, it's just, you're just asking for trouble to expect that you can put a sculpture in there when the whole space is completely unrealized and unfinished. So I guess my question is, can the sculpture, can we finish the park as a, as a unified space? Can we finish that and then look at it and say, okay, the park that the residents asked for 10 years ago, over 10 years ago, we finished that, now what makes sense for this park? Thank you very much. So I want to reflect a little bit and take a pause. Because um, there's two things coexisting here. It's the park and community members wanting more green space and to expand the park, which I fundamentally agree with. When I walked over there and I drove over there the first time I saw the park, I was like, and then I took out my tape measure and I was like, well, we could take this. And they were like, you can't take streets, Kim. <laughs> right? Because I was like, you need to just close this off and you can do this. And um, so they've been obliging my energy about this park. But the other piece is I think the whole foundation of embrace and belonging and diversity, equity, and inclusion is it's a process. And so I know as a, a former homeowner where I live and those kind of things, you want everything to be complete, right? But part of embracing diversity and inclusion and belonging is it's a never ending process. And so even with this park, who knows what great things will come once this sculpture is there because now you have something that multiple departments are invested in. My, my office is not gonna be okay with just this sculpture as what it represents being there and then being dilapidated. So there's another department that has funds that can support this happening. And so I think that's part of the process is sometimes more eyes, more people, more attention to something can help spur on what maybe didn't happen for 10 years. And so there's gonna be more pressing of situations and issues in this area. It's, you know, to, for it not to be forgotten, let's go back. It's about remembering, it's about embracing, and it's about belonging. And sometimes belonging is not comfortable. It takes time and it's ugly to get there. And maybe we're just in the ugly part right now and we're gonna get to the beauty of the radical belonging as we get there. Um, the other thing I would caution, especially when it comes to black spaces, black art, black things, people of, people of color is, we always want it to be done. 
And I would say, let us have our paws as well as members of this community to grow this space too alongside of you. And so I think this is the first attempt that I've seen and you can educate me in Burlington with something like this. And I really feel like it embodies this, this space, but it may take some time to develop and become the beautiful place that you want it to be, but we can get there. Thanks, Tim. We're actually out of time for questions. Um, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. I was, I was done talking. Um, you can finish up with your question, though. It's not really a question. It's just a, kind of like a statement. So far, I've been put out as a negative Nancy, and I don't want anybody to hear that. Most of my community members here know that's not me. The only reason why I spoke out, I live across the street, I work across the street, I see this place almost 24 7. I watch people's property that they don't even know about. Okay? I watch my neighbors, I care about my neighbors, whether they like me or not, because <laughs> that's just not my issue right now. So, what I'm thinking is yes, it's a beautiful piece that you're doing, it's a beautiful thing, it's not black. black. It's not about any kind of color. It's definitely about belonging. It's definitely about trying to do the right thing for everybody. So on that note, I hope there's a huge lesson learned on every agency's part for those that are in a serious, tight-knit community like the one is, because I don't hear much about the others. I don't hear about East End. I don't hear much about North End. Hear a whole, I mean, the new North End, you hear a whole lot going on here in the old North End. Community wise, <coughs> that's pretty hot too. That's pretty important that means we care a lot. So I just want to make sure the right thing's going on. I know my taxes will increase. That's a given no matter what, because that's what's got happening. My only concern is. Is we as a community here in Lump also know how much damage has been get done to anything that we do to improve. Because Revenue Electric Box has got seven tags on it. I've got so much expressive artwork going on, it's getting a little old. And I feel bad for always saying that. I'm already feeling bad for you, ma'am. I don't even want to hear about you getting one of these things where you say, oh my gosh, it's destroyed, type of thing. And then it hurts, in the same token, that these young folks that we are trying to impress are the ones doing it. So, we need to take a step back and think about that kind of stuff too, in this process. So it can stay there for 24 years or longer. So if we can help it all together, that would be great. But I know I'm asking much on this. But we try to protect our community, especially if you're going around the park that people live around. They're gonna buck up and say, hey, we've gotta pay attention. And that's what I wanted to do, is just bring attention to it. Because I too wanna do the right thing like everybody else. So I don't see color at all. I see male, back okay so before I talked about a mirror I just want to reflect back to everyone what I took notes on and what people said so that we we catch it all and if, if we didn't catch anything please come to me at the end and I can make sure we write it down so we talked about graffiti and tagging the concerns around that bringing in a non Burlington artist why that happened um, electrifying the park and what that means how much it costs the size of the sculpture and why that was chosen the way that it was uh, we talked about the other locations. Why didn't we pick another location and why do we pick Dewey Park? We talked about uh, how many people from the community were on the selection committee, which is a really important question. 
We talked about uh, what it means for the students in the school and if they're gonna use it or not. And we had a teacher kind of share what that means as a teacher of the school. We talked a little bit more about uh, possible design modifications, if that's on the table still. Um, and we also talked about what isn't still on the table. And I know that's a hard conversation to have, but uh, we can, there, there's some clarity there at least. Um, uh, we talked about the farmer's market, what happens to it, who had input, if it can still happen, if it can still grow after this is here. Um, we heard some people that were a fan, but were mostly concerned about the process, and we learned that Front Porch Forum for this community is, the, is one of the best ways to get information out there. Um, uh, somebody said that they appreciated the physical opportunities to talk about race, and that's what, what the whole sculpture is about. Um, and other people said that they still haven't seen a nice illustration of it, and maybe that's something that we can get back to you on. Um, we heard that the bigger the better, which is funny <laughs> um, and seems to counteract the other ones, but we're taking all of the opinions here. Um, uh, about making it safe for the students and making sure that it's not climbable. Um, I think when the artist was speaking about it being transparent, it, um, she was speaking to the kind of the holes in the design and not the physical kind of material that it's made out of. So it still will be made out of steel, but there will be holes in the design. Yeah, stainless steel. Yeah. Oh uh, yes, so and you'll see a little bit from the design, but it's meant to be walked through as well, and maybe that's also what you're alluding to. Okay. Um, uh, more comments about the farmer's market. This is something, it's like one of the major points that we heard from here, so. Um, and then, somebody said that they appreciated the synergy with IAA, and, and just so you know, IAA was a big part of this whole thing and will continue to be through its implementation and even afterwards, as Director Carson said. Um, we talked about what, what, what um, the pavement around the park is, what, what it means for the sculpture, what the future of that means. I'm sure there's more conversation that we can have about the future of this park, the streets around it, what happens after the sculpture is made. But somebody asked a great question of, why didn't we do it the other way around? Why didn't we set up the, the park first and then add the sculpture? Um, and that's a good part of the conversation to have. But uh, to Director Carson's point as well, this does give us new opportunity to bring some more attention to this small park that a lot of people kind of forget about or decide that they're not gonna change or something. So I think that, that we have some opportunities there. We talked about spending money um, with all the inflation going on and the cost of everything. Why is the government spending money on this rather than other things that could help people kind of on the ground? Um, we talked about uh, a good point I think that you made is we are celebrating diversity and maybe we're taking an opportunity to invite diversity into the community through the farmer's market. We talked about how uh, the farmer's market is going to be impacted. And then the last thing is uh, we just we really talked about Spring Street and making sure that we can close this off next. That is one of my major kind of takeaways from this. Um, and then the last thing is someone said that they appreciated another transformation of this park. Over the years, it's taken many different forms, and this is another one. So with that, I'll pass it back off to Director Carson. <laughs> so yes, one, I want to say thank you. Um, thank you guys for coming out. Thank you for being a part, and thank you for sharing your voices, even sometimes when you felt like they weren't going to be heard. Um, the other thing that we heard loud and clear was about process, and part of my job is equity, right? And so learning from this, we, there may not be a lot that changes with the location with this, but what I did learn and got hot coming in on my first week of work was process matters and how we engage people. And so one of the things that we did do as a team, even though it was in retrospect, is really think about what you said and how we're doing other things. So I don't want you to think that this is just about the park. This was a learning experience for me as well as a new resident to come in and realize and understand that how that each community may be needed to be engaged differently, what forms and all of those kind of things. So even though we're here talking about the park, I wanna also give a big gratitude to you all about being willing to be open and share and tell us what you need, right? And as adults, we all know that sometimes we don't get always what we want, right? But we did learn a lot from this, at least my office did. And that will allow me to be better at my job when I come to the table and talk about things in other places. And so I want you all to know that you have my, the office email. We provided it for everyone. Please send information to us. I do read them. I don't just ignore them. I actually do read them. So I'm grateful and thankful for that. And um, is there anything else? Oh. All right. So, oh. Hold on so we're just going to be working to update the website 
so that we answer some of the questions more deeply that were asked tonight. The visuals, yes, um, we're gonna make some changes. Um, I too is probably gonna have a lot of work when she goes home and she put a tremendous amount of work in before she came here. So be patient with us on that. Um, if there are other questions. Can I make a request about the website? Yes. Thank you. I was hoping on the website um, if you could provide voices of our neighbors who do support the monument and for whom it would be meaningful to have this monument here. As you said, looking left and right, maybe there's more opposition than support tonight. It'd be really helpful for me to hear those voices and understand what it would, what it would mean to people. Thank you. I'd just like to, Cindy, really request that the parklet get more um, input from the community because I know that everybody who goes to the farmer's market wants a trash can. I don't know that we necessarily want shade structures. Um, I don't know what that process of input has been, but as, as since you're asking what do we want as a community, I don't think we've been asked what we want in that parklet refresh. And so if that could be stepped back and please ask us what we want. Um, we, we were at the farmer's market, but we will continue to seek that input. But I just also want to say it's not the long-term piece, too. Right now, we're looking at that refresh. And the purpose of the shade structures is that we had heard people wanted shade. Um, but we are designing them such that they can be removed and placed in another park if the long-term decision is that you don't want additional shade there. Hi. About the material, I want to clarify is stainless steel and going to last for centuries. It's like a Statue of Liberty, you know, it's about honor, embrace and belonging that is going to stand test of time because they are meaningful, they are standing, uh, representing our spirit that we all love, we all belonging. Thank you. So I just want to end on saying we'll do our best to get everything up on the website if you did not get to ask a question tonight or you have a further question, just make sure you leave it at the back of the room or send it to REIB and the ad, the, um, yeah, the, the email address is REIB at City of Burlington, BTV, right? BTV. So, but also just leave your questions at the um, back uh, as well. Sorry. Right. Okay. Thank you very much for being here.